And we begin tonight with catastrophic storm damage in Louisiana. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Brittany Falkers. The entire city of New Orleans is without power tonight. Hurricane Ida made landfall 16 years after Hurricane Katrina wreaked havoc on the region. The storm slammed into New Orleans just before 10 this morning our time, and it could be the strongest storm to ever hit the U.S. Ida caused a massive storm surge, extreme winds and flash flooding across sections of southern Louisiana. You can see strong winds just ripping off rooftops and knocking over power lines. While Hurricane Ida hasn't weakened much, it has slowed down to a crawl and made a turn to the north. The Oregon State Fair is back on this year, and its first few days have been a real test case for the new outdoor mask mandate for crowded places. Tim Gordon reports on that and on a vaccine clinic at the fair this year. The Oregon State Fair is a popular place on opening weekend, but walk through the crowd and you see the outdoor mask mandate is not so popular. On Sunday afternoon, it appeared about half the crowd was ignoring it, including Kayla Sattler, here with a couple of unmasked friends. Her response to the governor's mandate. No, I'm fully vaccinated. Why should I have a mask? Why should I need a mask? You know, um, I got, I did what I, my part, I got vaccinated. I should be able to choose whether I want a mask or not. Nearby signs point out a COVID vaccine clinic happening inside an event hall. Unlike the masks, this is going smoothly. Healthcare workers have been vaccinating 50 to 60 people a day since Friday. Yeah, we were a little hesitant. Um, we didn't really see much of a reason. For some, like Brianna and Michael Robinette, the vaccine mandate for certain workers got them in. I work for the hospital, so it became a mandate, and that's where I went from there. It was, become a, it was a matter of me getting the shot or a livelihood, so that's why I chose. I was not mandated, but I was here to support him and go ahead and get it. Just better safe than sorry. They tell us business at this vaccination clinic ebbs and flows throughout the day. And wouldn't you know it, right at closing time on a Sunday evening, about a half dozen people came in to get their vaccines. And a good thing for people to remember is you're not fully vaccinated until two weeks after your final dose. So for Johnson & Johnson, that's great because two weeks from today, you're fully vaccinated. Josh Frankie says all three vaccine types are available here, and he is glad to see people getting them. Back outside, the music is playing and people are having fun. But it is no fun for fair organizers trying to get people to mask up. They tell them coming in, offer masks for those without, and remind them again when they can. It really takes people doing the right thing if, if they want this fair to continue. The best version of this classic American State Fair is only possible with your help. Please, while you're at the Oregon State Fair, please wear your mask. In Salem, Tim Gordon, KGW News. The federal government is recommending Americans get a third dose of the Pfizer or Moderna vaccines eight months after their second shot. Since many states started ramping up their inoculations in February and March, Verify viewer Mary wants to know what that means for the annual fall flu shot. So Mary, let's verify. Can you get the flu shot and a booster shot at the same time? Our sources are the CDC, a professor at Johns Hopkins University, and Dr. Pyle Coley, a professor at the University of Colorado, who explains where the concern for taking two vaccines originates. The reason that we worry about taking two vaccines at the same time is because if your immune system is trying to fight two things or learn how to fight two things rather than one thing, it might get distracted and not do as good a job making antibodies against each individual one. There isn't a lot of research since the COVID-19 vaccine is so new, but early data shows taking both vaccines around the same time shouldn't be an issue for people with normal immune systems because they work differently within your body. I'm very convinced that it's, it's very safe to give these vaccines either at the same time or within days of one another. It's unlikely that it's going to affect the immunogenicity or the protective effectiveness of either of these vaccines. Durbin points out participants in last year's vaccine trials were allowed to get their flu shot and it had no impact on the results. The CDC also eliminated its recommendation to wait 14 days between vaccines. So it's true, you can get both the COVID-19 vaccine booster and flu shot at the same time. If you're immunocompromised or otherwise hesitant, 
Doctors say it's still perfectly fine to space them out. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. To receive daily fast facts to your phone, text VERIFY to 202-410-8808. And to sign up for our newsletter, visit verifythis.com forward slash email. Two years after her murder, Portland police are again asking for your help to find out who killed Logan Nettleton. She was 19 years old when she was killed on August 30th of 2019. That day, Nettleton was found dead from gunshot wounds at a home near Southeast 174th and Powell just after 3.30 in the morning. Her mother has been searching for clues about what happened ever since, and she's pleading that anyone with information come forward. You can contact the Portland Police Bureau or Crime Stoppers of Oregon. There's a cash reward for information that leads to an arrest and conviction. You can also stay anonymous. Portland police are also asking for help in the investigation into Carlos Rodriguez Lanz. They began looking into rape accusations against him back in March, and it's believed there may be more survivors that haven't yet come forward. Right now, he's in custody on an unrelated parole violation. He has been charged with multiple offenses for assaulting at least four people. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Portland Police Sex Crimes Unit. Tonight, the community waits for a decision in Newburgh after a school board vote divided neighbors. And now two new symbols of defiance stand in view of a school there. Galen Etlin looks at the pushback over the last few days and how we got here. In the heart of Newburgh, this crowd fights for visibility under the unity flag. There are about two to three hundred people here now, maybe. This was the scene August 24th, exactly two weeks after the Newburgh School Board voted 4-3. to three. Get political symbols and divisive symbols out of our schools. That included Black Lives Matter and Pride flags. This crowd fought back for BIPOC and LGBTQ youth. Their identities cannot be seen. It's already hard enough being in high school. I understand the feeling of isolation that like some students can have. David Myers grew up nearby in McMinnville. He says a Black Lives Matter flag at school would not be political to black children. Having that uh, opportunity to feel a community around you and community supporting you uh, is great for children. Newburgh mother Ty Harden Moore told the board black students do not feel safe right now. Because my son was called a at school. That's why a few days later on a drizzly morning, this group came together. When members of a marginalized population ask you for help, you just say, yes, this was what we got. After the school board vote, Erin McCarthy and her husband, Jay Bill, helped build this Progress Pride flag on their farm within view of Newburgh High School. Giving voice to those who feel like at the moment, they don't have one. Members of the black community then reached out to add a BLM flag. Our life isn't political. Andre Miller is an activist who helped build and paint the new BLM flag noting it is not connected to the political organization with that same name. When we actually say Black Lives Matter on the street, we're really referring to that our life as black people matter. The only divisiveness is white supremacy. There are people of all walks of life in Newburgh. Ryan Clark with the Newburgh Graphic has followed every development, reporting the school board may have broken state law when the same four members voted to hire outside legal counsel in a closed door meeting. An intensely political issue here. District lawyers are supposed to review the symbol ban first, but with the story reaching multiple national outlets, legal heat is coming from all sides. The ACLU of Oregon has already chimed in saying that if the ban were to move forward, there will be legal action that it's considering. So why the big upset? Studies by the Trevor Project show lesbian, gay, and bisexual youth are five times more likely to attempt suicide because of bullying and lack of support. And a study in JAMA Pediatrics shows black children under 13 are twice as likely to die by suicide compared to white children. To these kids, a flag is more than a flag. Showing that they are worthy of being alive. So seeing something like this saves lives, you feel? Literally saves lives. A fight under the unity flag in this town, not so united. Galen Etlin, KGW News.
For the second year in a row, the Portland Art Museum and Northwest Film Center will be the exclusive host for Venice VR Expanded. It's a virtual reality extension of the famed Venice Arts Festival. The show will offer attendees the chance to view 37 exclusive immersive VR projects. After you pick your choice of headset, you can experience the projects competing for the grand jury prize for best VR work, best VR experience, and best VR story. The program here will include 23 projects in the official competition and 12 projects that represent best of projects launched last year. You're actually in the story. So whether you're a character or whether it's a first person adventure where you're going through caves or my, the one I'm most excited about, you're on the International Space Station with the astronauts. You're not just watching passively, you're actively a part of the story. That sounds so cool. The Venice VR Expanded Experience kicks off on Wednesday. It runs through the 19th. Each ticket can be bought on the Portland Art Museum website for $35. A restaurant that used to serve people on Mississippi Avenue is reopening its doors this week, but at a new location. And they're still ready to serve you some of your longtime favorites. Quantrell spent about five years at its old location and decided to move spaces to the Hosford Abernathy a neighborhood where it felt more like home and had more patio space. There was a soft opening for friends and family this weekend. Today was the first time they offered tasting menus and a la carte items. They'll be ready to fully go all out next Wednesday. As for what you can expect. Chef driven, farm to table, tasting menus, composed plates, uh, hyper local, uh, working with farms, including our own farm, Abbey Road Farm, getting some produce from there as well. Uh, it's our winery as well. We've got a lot going on down there and helping us out up here. If you want to check it out for yourself, be sure to call ahead for a reservation. For now, the restaurant will require proof of vaccination, masks when you're not at your tables, and social distancing. Today was a special family reunion for a family from Italy that immigrated to Portland in the 1950s and helped build the city into the powerhouse that it is today. The first of the Rabiati family immigrated to the U.S. in 1950. Then others began moving here shortly after. They faced many challenges and language barriers, yet they managed to contribute to the growth of the city. They worked for Columbia Pickling and Packing, Scarpelli Macaroni Company. They worked on garbage routes and for furniture companies. The siblings went to school at night to learn English, U.S. history, and eventually become U.S. citizens. They couldn't all get Get together for more than a year because of the pandemic and today they gathered to catch up in person and share stories our father at the age of 90 became an american citizen and he was at that time probably the oldest person ever to become an american citizen at that age okay. uh, his picture of the american flag was on the front page of the oregonian newspaper with a great big letter on top Giovanni is one of us. The family will stick around for just a few more days, then they'll be heading back home until they meet again. Now let's get you over to